speaking of cattle, uh, we've been uh, following uh, this uh, this issue on and off through the years, and indeed we've been reporting on a couple of recent trials in it's which a, it's the, a libertarian touchstone in which the kind, concerned state has been protecting us against the terrible danger of voluntarily going to our neighbor and buying fresh milk from them, which, of course, is the sort of thing that must be stamped out if we're ever going to live forever in this beautiful utopia. So some poor farmer was facing accounts of selling milk illegally to someone who wanted it. Derek Freeman uh, actually followed. He attended the week-long trial of an Amish dairy farmer, Vernon Hirschberger, who was acquitted on three of the four charges, as I understand it. He, He tweeted about it and is here with us now. Derek, how are you, sir? I'm great. That's right, Jack and Joe. You have the story correct. Thanks for having me. Are, sure. you, a, are you a libertarian activist whose last name is Freeman? Isn't that just good luck? It's so, not a, yeah, it's not was, a nom de plume? I, I, well, it is. I was there live tweeting for Vernon Hirschberger, who's an Amish dairy farmer. And can you believe it? He had the audacity to sell his milk. Uh, to his neighbors. I, I, I couldn't believe it, but the jury of 12 actually found him not guilty. You know, just for the record, he was selling his cow's milk, right? I mean, not, <laughs> I just, I wanna, yeah, you he, he, okay. he, he milks okay. himself. <laughs> yeah, I do. Because there, there are limitations. <laughs> you can um, milk anything with nipples, right. Greg. He's got a healthy family, but no, he was uh, <laughs> he was milking his own cows. Yeah. And actually, he has about 200 members who join him in milking those cows. And those were the people who uh, were buying the milk from them. So, I mean, they volunteer on the farm and then they want the milk that they themselves produce. Obviously, they know the risks that are involved the in risks. drinking this milk. They produced it themselves. Right. I like the way everybody's they deal made with it every day. This, I like the way this is it's even to the point now where people talk about the risks. They knew the risks involved the risks. Maybe it's just because I grew up in Wisconsin and everybody drank fresh milk. Even despite the... Nobody talked about the risks. <laughs> it's not nitroglycerin, for People God's sake. People been drinking milk since the dawn of time. So anyway, well, Derek... The, exciting, the jury found him not guilty, and that really sent a strong message to the state to just leave peaceful farmers alone. Well, what were the charges? Well, essentially, the three charges that he was found not guilty for all involved licensing. So it was operating a dairy farm without a license, uh, being a retail uh, sales without a license, and uh, pro- being a milk producer without a license. It's all the same thing. It's charge stacking, and the state is uh, famous for it. They just charge you with the same thing multiple times, hoping right. one will stick. And right. it sounds like he was, was in smart. violation of them, so the jury just basically is saying, we don't care? He was in clear violation of the rules, and the jury said, absolutely not. This rule should not apply to this farmer. Leave him alone. And it sets a great precedent. The state even alleged that he had a store, which he doesn't, and then armed bureaucrats waltz right into his kitchen and pour blue dye into 2,300 pounds of perfectly good milk. Wow. That he could have used to feed his wife and 10 children. Right. Thank goodness he's an Amish farmer who's okay with video, and so his son was able to capture this. The jury was able to see it for themselves. I think that was the real nail in the state's coffin. Wow. I'm surprised if he's, got, if he's got 10 kids, Mrs. hirschberger has been milking old Vernon. Well, and I'm surprised he had a video as an Amish. I thought it would have been a charcoal sketching of what had happened. Yeah. So, um, so what was the charge that they convicted him of? They convicted him of violating a holding order, which is essentially uh, the crime of breaking into his own refrigerator. They literally wrapped his refrigerator in police tape saying that he wasn't allowed to access his own wow. milk, ice cream, yogurt. Oh, my God. I would go crazy if this happened oh to me. God. I'd go crazy if this happened to me. Cops or whoever, people with badges and guns, break into my place, destroy some of my own property, and say I'm not allowed to touch it. Just That's incredible. Absolutely freaking incredible. We, we, we are so far down the road to this sort of thing, and people don't get outraged about it. The government has confiscated our rights and is are selling them back to us. I mean, what is um, is there any legitimate argument? For not letting a guy with a cow sell milk to somebody else who wants it. Is there any legitimate argument? The the Ringling Brothers Summer Circus. It it was literally next to a circus. (laughs) And even the Farm Food Freedom Coalition rented out the circus theater and live streamed the event across the street for those who wanted to watch from a safe distance. The place was packed. The the trial lasted five days. And the verdict came in at 1.30 a.m. Saturday morning. What? Yes, when the did... jury stayed Friday night all the way until one thirty a.m. when the final verdict came in. Were you surprised that they convicted uh, the farmer of that one charge? 
I wasn't because so much was kept from the jury that it was impossible for them to make an accurate decision. The word liberty was forbidden to be spoken. The words raw milk were not allowed to be spoken. Uh, people were bounced from the courtroom for having allusions to milk on their shirts. Well, it was absolutely ridiculous. So how was the how did they really ref- biased. how did they refer to the milk? The product. What the hell? So is it is, through the looking glass? Are these laws being driven by giant uh, milk producers that make billions of dollars off of us buying milk that has no flavor in the grocery store? There's no way for me to say for sure, but in any detective work, you follow the money. And who's got the money in this case? It's obviously the the milk producers' unions, the big agribusiness in Wisconsin, who wants to crush the small guys and make sure that we aren't free to trade our own products. Hey, uh, uh, Derek, are you based out of Wisconsin? I'm not. I traveled from Philadelphia to be okay. there. That's oh, good where for I'm you. Based, where I, I, I produce for Peace News now, and people can follow us on Twitter and Facebook. But I live streamed and tweeted for the whole thing. So if people want to see every minute of this trial is broken down at peacenewsnow.com, just click on blog and scroll down. You'll see it all there. Yeah, His we'll have father, a we'll have a big link so people can grace. so people can find it real easily. We'll have a link at our website. So, uh, Derek, the reason I, I brought up where you're based is that. Um, it's just it's astounding to people who don't live here the extent to which co- completely suffocating nannyism is popular in California. I mean, if your intentions sound concerned and sincere at all, people vote for anything you propose to keep everybody safe because that's better. So, you know, I was the follow the money thing absolutely is important and significant. But the the nanny statism that's caught hold is just so disgusting to us. But. What are you going to do? We're going to do what you're doing through the common sense legislation. They were able to see that the law was written in a good spirit. They want to keep people safe and make sure that the food is is okay to eat. But obviously, you have to apply some common sense and not just send armed bureaucrats to run into people's kitchens and steal their food. That doesn't make sense anywhere. By the way, that's a new like uh, libertarian voluntarist thing, isn't it? Referring to cops as armed bureaucrats, isn't it? Isn't that what they are? I'm going to start. I'm going to. I'm going to start adopting that. I mean, because if you, if you talk about a sworn peace officer from your local town, okay, you know, if you want to refer to them that way, fine, free speech, um, and and I respect that. Uh, but if you get down to all the government agencies that are run by unelected bureaucrats that are created by vague acts of Congress, and they all have the force of arms, and they all have enforcement power, and they all have guns. Well, yeah, they're armed bureaucrats. That's a good term. It happens where you are in California. People can Google Rossum Foods and see armed bureaucrats with guns drawn. It looks like a drug raid. They're only there for a farmer. The same thing is happening in Michigan right now with Mark Baker, who's a pig farmer, facing millions of dollars in fines and a felony for him and his entire family for their perfectly healthy heritage pigs. The state is ordering them to be killed. Beautiful. It is. I've, I've seen the. Agribusiness. I've seen the California one you're talking about. I mean, that, that's unbelievable. You go in with guns drawn because somebody sells milk or eggs or whatever to their neighbor. Right. What the hell? Land of the free. Ha, ha, ha. I can't believe that this this happens in the United States of America, and other people think it's all right. Derek are, Freeman, are you really are you really in favor of selling unpasteurized milk to somebody who wants to buy it? Yeah, of course. And if you don't want to buy it, don't freaking buy it. What's the go damage, ahead, Dominic? Go Explain ahead, counter to it. me the damage. You, well, if if the person drinks the milk and gets sick, that's then their we, problem. Then, then we got to take care of that person in the hospital. What are you doing? Oh, oh, please, please! But that, well, well, that's so so pasteurize well, you're, the you're, damn milk, people. You, you 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 see. Unfortunately, you are right about that part about we have to take care of, yeah. which is what happens when you have socialism. It's all tied together. All right, listen, Derek. Forget our idiot producer. He, he's kept in a cage and put with sticks. How dare you? <laughs> Turn off his mic, Michael. Uh, we will stay in touch, sir. Well done. Thank you. Peace. Right. It's good to talk to you. Derek Freeman will have a link um, to all his info at Arm- we already at armstrongandgettyradio.com. So, so seriously, Dominic, I know you think the whole libertarian thing is wrong, and you use this example a lot. What is wrong with you got uh, two people, me with a goat. I have goats, actually, and we're going to start milking goats. We have a goat milking stand. If I'm milking a goat and Joe wants to buy some goat milk, why would the government need to be involved in that transaction at all? If you were giving Joe the milk, God bless you. 
but if you're selling it, then you've got to make sure that milk isn't poison. Why? Why? I, why? I, because why? Like, I'm an adult. I will tell Jack what requirements right. I have right. for him so, to so sell me the milk. Libertarians believe, you know what? If they serve me poison meat at McDonald's, I just won't go back there. No, you don't. <laughs> there we go. That's what they believe. <laughs> You have no idea what libertarians oh, believe. Oh, I do. I don't but think you do, you know Joe. I, I tell you what. Here's one of the many reasons that that wouldn't happen. McDonald's makes a gazillion dollars a year. If they sold any poisoned meat, they would go out of business. So they have a great reason not to. The other thing is the idea that um, an independent group that goes around and checks restaurants to see if they're safe would be not as good as a government group. You could still have a group of people that verifies whether or not restaurants are safe. They would just be privately held and, I think, less susceptible cor- to corruption and better at doing their job than a government organization. You so, want to have a private uh, department of health? Yes, because, so, because as we see with the IRS and uh, so many other uh, government agencies, and I could name a lot of them, the SEC looking at porn all day long instead of checking to see if these uh, trades were actually real. All these government agencies are bad at their job. You'd be better off with a private organization you- that people pay into. And and decide their best. And you know what? If they do a bad job, you get a different private organization. Yeah, if three people die, then we'll get a different organization. I, I don't want... I would rather... You know what? I agree with a lot of things libertarians say, but they go a little wacky when they say we should rewrite the Constitution every 19 years. <laughs> I'll, come up with, I'll come up with one All other right, tag. Right. I'll come up with one other tag. No, okay. why would why, you waste your time? Why wouldn't you feel safe with the idea that you just don't buy unpasteurized milk, so you're okay? Why do you freaking care if Joe buys milk for me? See, that's the thing with me. I do not give a crap if that guy over there uh, buys something from that guy. Okay. Why would I care? Why I, would that make any difference it, to me? I have the answer. Because I have a soul and I believe in humans and oh, I believe yeah. in God. You know go, and go my have friend somebody Joe, diaper you and Joe put, might be foolish. Have somebody diaper my friend. you and put baby powder on you because you want to be treated like an infant. I, think, I don't. No, I care for my I care for my fellow neighbors and we got to care for each other. You want an infantilized life. I don't. I bet we have spawned a good conversation. One eight six six three three one talk. Well, we certainly haven't had any yet. you know, you know, you can say that, Joe, and I'm on your side of the argument, except his side of the argument is winning. So there are way more people that believe what he believes than believe what we believe. So, well, they are uh, <clears throat> stupid. But <laughs> so, and I, pathetic. I'm happy that we have somebody here who's representing the what, idiots. What most people think. Put on a diaper. Our phone number is one eight six six three three one talk. Where's his dinky, Vince? Find it. Three one talk. We'll take your calls next. You're listening to the Armstrong and Getty Show. We are- 